All right, it is four o'clock and we have our quorum, so we will call the February 22nd Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Uh, Steve, if I could have you please do the roll call. Sure, uh, Joe Clark. Present. Alderperson Savaglio. Marcus. Jerry Jones was not gonna be able to attend today. Richard Lindy. Present. Pam Langen. Present. Robert Heimrell. And Charlie Wig. Present. Excellent. Uh, if we could please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mark Sun. And so Marcus has joined us. Hello, Marcus. Excellent. So I, under item, <laughs> thank you. Under item 1.3, uh, if any board members could identify potential conflicts of interest for our items today. Hearing nothing, I assume there are none, and we'll move to item 2.1, approval of the minutes from the February 8th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, two seconds. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved, thank you very much. Which brings us to item 3.1. Uh, proposed construction of a new deck addition and seasonal structure at Parker John's at 705 Riverfront Drive. If that team could come to the podium and introduce yourselves and then kind of walk us through what you're proposing, please. And we do have the drawings we can pull up on the screen. It's good, because I didn't bring any with me. <laughs> uh, Aaron Sloman with Parker John's, uh, looking to uh, enhance our outdoor seating uh, to, to better service guests in the two months of summer that we have on Sheboygan's Riverfront. That was a joke, probably <laughs> four. Um, what we faced the last two years was just the water coming up on the boardwalk and, and pretty much washing out that lower patio multiple times. So um, we had leased land from the city, I think back in 2017, 2018, with the expectation that eventually we would like to add on uh, to, that, to that lower patio area and raise it up. Uh, so if water continues to be an issue, um, we're covered from a guest standpoint and people aren't washing out uh, trying to figure out where they're going to eat when we have a full dining room and uh, no place to put them but they're underneath you know three four inches of water on the lower patio so that's the plan that's the intention um, the little addition onto the building is is a server station so a place for them to access soda uh, an ice bin uh, a POS station that's out of the elements uh, rather than having to go inside uh, and, and get those items. Thank you. Um, I guess one clarification item, your very nice renderings seem to be showing a lattice work underneath the new deck, mm -hmm. whereas the elevation drawings, I wasn't finding that indicated. Uh, is there an intention to have that lattice work as it's, shown? It's lattice, yeah. Okay. And I believe Quash has said they're gonna. It's not gonna be the the prefab stuff. They're gonna actually construct it in one by twos. And I know that the city is wanting to make sure that it, it just stays in keeping with the the shanty guidelines. Steve, any other concerns on that or? Uh, no, uh, we ended up uh, talking to the applicant, the architect, a couple of different times. There were some different renderings. I think in the end, it was something to the effect of, hey, let's kind of match what's there. And uh, there was a little bit of discussion um, on, on the uh, lattice and what the uh, um, applicant just kind of indicates is, uh, um, let's see, See the two by twelve treated deck joists will sit directly on the two by six decks will not have treated post going into the ground. Uh, lattice will be cedar tone treated made on site with two by two material and will simulate standard lattice but stronger. So uh, 
the lattice will not be diamond shaped. We'll run horizontal and verticals to make squares. So other than that, no, um, staff was okay with the design as presented. And I think the only other question I had, uh, I'm sure your architect's on top of it, but egress from the deck, uh, couldn't tell if there were enough egress points or if it was back through the building. Are there gates to the deck or is it fully enclosed? I think, there, I think the intention is to put um, exit off the back as well. And then in the, on the, um, right in front of that server station, there's actually gonna be access um, to, the, to the door to the left of that door, okay. which is basically our kitchen door. There'll be access there as well. Great. Other questions or comments from the board? Will there be? Will there be access to the new deck from the walkway? Um, no, they'd have to come through the, the, the restaurant. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Otherwise, I think it's nice to see the, the riverfront getting some use. I'd certainly entertain a motion if someone were so inclined. So a motion from Pam, second by Dick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those, actually let's do a roll call vote. Joe Clark. Aye. Marcus Savaglio. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam Langen. Aye. Robert Heimroll. Aye. And Charlie Wig. Aye. Opposed? Oh, I guess we don't need opposed. No. Nope. Never mind. No. Nope. <laughs> Perfect. That passes. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very much. Good. What is your schedule for when that's likely to get built? Um, as soon as they possibly can. I, I know you plan on starting to move snow next week if you could. So. Gonna melt by Monday. <laughs> yeah. We're hoping. Yeah. Right. We are hoping. All right. Okay. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, item 3.2 is the proposed construction of new building additions and two silos at Old World Creamery at 1606 Erie Avenue. If you guys could introduce yourselves, please, and uh, tell us what you're proposing. My name is Steve Knaus, uh, one of the members of Old World Creamery. I should say the operating member. Right. Uh, I'm Jason Ahrens with Distinctive Design Studio. Um, the architecture firm. And a little about what you're proposing. Well, um, the uh, Old World Creamery would like to add a couple of uh, silos uh, to the southwest uh, corner of the building. Um, for um, They want to place them there uh, so they're closer to a new production line that they want to install uh, in the the room that's located at the southwest corner of, of the building. Uh, they also want to um, do a small salt storage addition uh, so they can store salt uh, away from the equipment, which would, um, salt is corrosive, so it would cut down on uh, maintenance and repair costs. Tell us a little bit about the materials and stuff, Jason, what they're doing. The intent is the intent is to make the uh, additions um, match with the existing building. So uh, both of the additions would have a cream-colored uh, brick exterior with tan uh, flashing and copings. The silos would uh, be stainless steel uh, stainless steel tanks, thirty thousand gallon uh, cream tanks. And you had mentioned a couple of tanks. It is the four silos that are proposed, right? Yes, eventually, eventually it would be four silos. But right now, um, at the present time, we are looking at the two silos on the south side of the corridor addition. And eventually, uh, the two additional silos will be added on the north side. 
my, my first reaction when I flipped through the set was, wow, that's gonna take some getting used to. But then Steve actually pointed out the silos that were there previously. Yep. <laughs> I guess I'd never really noticed. <laughs> um, that said, there was a lot more on the corner, I think, cluttering it up and yeah. you cleared that out now so that there's the sign there. Yep. Um, but since there were similar items there before, and it's a nice distinctive part of what you do, it seemed to me to be a nice, uh, nice addition there. It sort of becomes signage for the building without being signage, which made me wonder if you would use it for signage at all. Is there any thought to do anything on those silos? Haven't, haven't no. discussed it, but okay. somebody will come up with, uh, they want to put a name or they want to Naming do something, rights. you know. <laughs> yep. Can I ask one question? Steve. Is, you know, for the location of the tanks, is it something from a process perspective that's taking place in that area as to why the location over there? Um, that room in that southwest corner, um, that used to be their blow molding room where they made bottles. Uh, we we redid that whole room now. We took the floors out. We put all new floors in there, uh, new ceiling. So that whole room is going into uh, a new production line. Um, I, I, it's it's out in the market already. We're we're marketing it already. Um, we're we're putting butter in a tub. Uh, nobody has butter in a the tub. They got butter with oils in the tub. They got butter with canola oil and olive oil and everything. We're gonna have a natural butter in a tub. And uh, my, my kids are in the business with me in Sun Prairie, and my kids are the ones that came up with the idea. They said the new generation doesn't want to open paper butter no more. We're done with that. We want to put it on the table, they scoop it out, put a lid on it, put it back in. So we, put a, we invested in a whole production line in there. One thing you gotta remember, and I can, it's, it's a little secret, but it's not, it's known. Cream is like a little baby. You get it in them silos and then you gotta crystallize it. And you wanna pump it as very short distance before you make butter with it. Otherwise the molecules bust open and your yields go down. So you wanna be as close to them silos because that's, that's where we age our cream. We'll age our cream in there for a amount of time and we take it from there through the butter churn. And the less you work that butter, your yields are much better. So that's why we've got to be close to our plant, uh, close to the room that is going to be put into the churn. And we're going to be within 35 feet from the churn. So it's, <coughs> it's a close distance. And, and our other churn sits right above the silos on the roof. So we come down from the roof right down into the other churn. So that will be our second butter churn that our second butter churn that will be churning butter in that plant. So once we get production done, we'll be about 190,000 pounds of butter a day. Wow. Not, not a week, a day yeah. will be a good day for us. Yeah. But we think the next generation is coming out with the, with the tub butter is what we need. So, so that's where I'm at. Uh -oh. Jan? <laughs> We're working on it. Can you do the next one over? Next one over. Thank you. So I just want to state that we you'll recall that the Dean's food plant went, vac went vacant and then um, we had had some good successes with Steve and his group on the Old World Creamery and we're excited to see their expansion. And I just have a follow-up question to the butter that goes in the tub. So is the butter soft? It, it can be soft on room temperature, but we're not stating that it's going to come out of the refrigerator soft. Okay. Okay. That's a statement that we won't take. Sounds well, we good, thank you. It's going to be spreadable, but not out of the refrigerator. Good luck with your expansions. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Oh, Dick made Dick. Because I love cheese and butter so much. Um, Go, Wisconsin. So it isn't going to bother me seeing those towers or silos. Personally, I think it's great. great. And Dick had a comment. How can you? I move for approval as presented. Second. Dick moved for approval, and uh, Pam seconded. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, Steve, if you can run us through. Joe Clark. Aye. Alderperson Savaglio. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam Langan. Aye. Robert Heimerl. Aye. And Charlie Wig. Aye. That is unanimous. Yes. We, we all you. like butter. <laughs> yes. I'm working on that too. <laughs> Speaking of that, where where is like the store in terms of uh, the site? When you walk site? in, it's right to the right. It used to be that conference room right there. Okay. So when you which street are you walking in? The, the front door, Erie Avenue. Yep. Okay. Come in Erie yeah. Avenue. It's on the right side. Is there yep. a sign? Isn't there? Little the little sign. Yeah. Not much. No. Sounds good. We with with COVID nineteen, we took it slow. We didn't want to make a big thing out of it. We just. We wanted a store, and my dad don't like conference rooms, so the conference room went. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. See you guys tomorrow. Thank Great. you. Good luck with the project. All right, that brings us to the item 3.3, proposed construction of a new building additions at Johnsonville Sausage at 3402 Crocker Avenue. If you good me. afternoon. Thank you very much for your time today. My name is Mike Ames. I'm the Director of Engineering for Johnsonville Sausage. Uh, with me, I've got two other gentlemen. Behind me is Brian Jacoby. He's our Senior Project Engineer um, that will lead the project. And I've also got Mike Sampson um, from Excel Engineering. So between the three of us, we'll be able to answer your questions. Um, so first and foremost, I wanted to share with you that Johnsonville is very excited about working with the city. Uh, we look at this as a unique opportunity for all of us kind of some of the things that are in our intent in this process. You know, we want to maintain our reputation as a business and also as our brand. So that's very important for us and I wanted to share that. We also want to increase our manufacturing capability um, in the county. And then lastly, we'd like to strategically grow within this location. You know, phase one being about 20% of the 193, 200,000 square foot that's available, that we have multiple phases. I'm, I'm sorry, okay. Um, so so kind of what we'll do, this is the intriguing part, we're gonna convert a SOX facility <laughs> to produce sausage. You'll, <laughs> um, I'm not always sure that that's a great idea. I'll share that with you. However, it's, it's a great piece of real estate um, and we feel that it best matches our, our intent. Um, so it's very much a light duty manufacturing site. We'll convert that to a refrigerated food, sausage, meat uh, manufacturing process. Um, we'll ultimately start with one line and then kind of develop over time. Uh, there is high growth potential, um, but we can talk about it at a later point. Um, ultimately, I think it could be a, a great opportunity for both the city and, and for Johnsonville. And then for that, I'll turn it over to any questions. I think our biggest concerns probably have to do with the, the sight line issues to your mechanical equipment. Generally, we're looking for screen. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. The uh, screening of mechanical equipment and sight lines. Sure. Just making sure those are addressed. Typically, we've been uh, pushing for screening on all that equipment. And in your submittal package, it looks as if uh, there was on one of the elevations a, a wall height being raised. Well, to address that. Uh, could, could I put in one second? Yeah. Hey, Mike, let me just mention one second. If you wouldn't mind, why don't you just kind of indicate what the addition is, where sure. it's going, and then uh, maybe we could talk about some of the mechanicals and the screening and things like that. Thanks, Steve. Um, that little piece right there at the back end of the building is the addition. So it's a thousand square feet added to a 193,000 square feet building. So we were aware of the screening requirements. And uh, the first thing we did is we took a look at and tried to figure out how to generate screening for this building, not only for the first go around, but as we move forward and uh, tried to anticipate what will happen at this building. And so our first go at looking at screening um, and the sight lines we presented a sight line drawing here. Currently all the units are gonna be on the north side of the building away from the street. 
And um, we felt that the best way to provide screening for the, those units would be to add some shrubbery. So we're proposing something like 21 trees on the uh, southeast corner of the building where we have a sight line where we could see those units. The idea being that we can screen the mechanical units and do it in a pleasant way. We also did prepare just for discussion what a mechanical screen would look like that would screen both units now and in the future. And to be perfectly honest, we didn't like how that looked. <laughs> the screening wall would be almost as tall as the building. So the top of the screening wall would be almost at the city limit of 40 feet or 50 feet. And it just, it looked like we were going to take you show it. Yeah, that's drive. that screening wall. Yeah. And it's taking and putting a big sail on top of the building. And we came up with that. We sat around with all our friends at Johnsonville and everybody said, eh. <laughs> so with due consideration, we decided that we could get the same effect by planting two rows of trees right along Crocker Avenue, which is what you see in the, the rendering right there. And the, the trees can grow over time. Right now, the 14 foot trees would completely screen all the units that are part of this first phase. And those are all evergreens? Yes. Yeah, and they're from the city's approved list. And generally, we, we've tried to have a policy to encourage the screening rather than using landscaping for that. But I do agree that the screening solution here is rather unattractive. <laughs> uh, probably a bit of an engineering nightmare too. Um, yes, it was. <laughs> and I think for this initial phase, since the equipment is so far to the north, you know, the sight lines are going to be pretty reasonable. But I, I would have concerns for those future phases and you know, what is the tree height and the density? Uh, are we getting good screening in the future? Mm -hmm. So I guess probably from the city's perspective, wanting to make sure that this isn't understood as a this is going to cover it for all the other additions or each of those I think the city would want to take a look at just to make sure that each of those was being addressed at the time. I, and it may be that these trees are enough uh, once they're there. Uh, but it depends on that, how the timing works out. Yeah. There may be enough time for the trees to grow into the screening solution. So. And otherwise the building modifications were pretty minor. Right. Uh, there was Very nothing minor. that I saw there as problematic. So any other comments or concerns or questions from the rest of the board? Chad or Steve, any additional city comments? No, I think uh, we've been talking for some time, Johnsonville, you know, just like you're talking about the city's obviously excited to have you guys coming in, you know, and, and starting our partnership and getting you guys in the city. So we're happy to work with you that way. We've had some discussions with the architect and representatives from Johnsonville, making them aware of this. This they thought was their best initial response. We can see that, and it was more of what you were talking about, that should there be some things down the road, we might have to take a look at something at that point in time. But at this point in time, we thought this was a, a reasonable way of addressing the addition that they, they're adding. And then Chad. So like Steve said, I just wanna mention that we have worked with Johnsonville prior to this. We actually gave them a $200,000 deferred loan to help with um, getting operational based on the job creation. We're excited that they were able to find a building. I know we were working with site selectors and you guys were originally uh, honing in on other areas and then this came available and taking a sock factory, I guess, works. So we're appreciative of that and we look forward to continued growth at this location. Thank you. So with that, I would entertain a, a motion from the board. We have a motion, do I hear a second? Bob seconded that. Any further discussion? 
waiting for the phones. <laughs> Hearing nothing. Steve, if you can run us through the roll call, please. Sure. Joe Clark. Aye. Marcus Savaglio. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam Langen. Aye. Robert Heimroll. Aye. And Charlie Wig. Aye. Excellent. Thank you all very much. Congratulations. It's Thank you very much. Passed. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Sounds great. Same place. Anything else from the board? Other items to discuss? Uh, oh, only one thing, um, and I know every now and then I have to be a pain to everyone, but um, if there's any way, if we got, make sure we got everyone's contact information and emails, if uh, people can just get back to us as soon as they're available, we would really appreciate your help in that. So um, thank you for that. That's it. And we are potentially scheduled for meeting again March 8th. Right, tentatively. Super. So with that, if there's nothing else, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? And a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We, are, <laughs> we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.